Why should we consider the silicone molding technique? Why this technique is alive and interesting still today? Check it out on today's episode of Max DM Crafting. Since this is a chapter that I find very interesting, especially for the most fearful of approaching the molding and resin casting technique, it seemed right to dedicate an entire documentary to this topic and bring it to the community. If you have been following my channel for some time, you have probably witnessed my first experiments with silicone and resin. Now, after a few years, my experience has increased and I can confidently say that I have learned this technique through trial and error and to be ready to provide you with a full summary. First of all the reasons, let's try to understand this. I have nothing against 3D printers, indeed I really hope that one day I will be able to afford one. However, I believe that they are just another tool in favor of our hobby, not that they can replace our art in all respects, and that being able to rely on the right technique at the right time is a gold standard quality for all of us. Today the world of crafting is in fact much more open to the 3D printing, especially for the reproduction of miniatures or small details, so cloning using silicone molds could appear to be an obsolete technique and particularly expensive in terms of time and resources. So what are the reasons that keep it interesting and alive? The first reason lies in the term cloning. To make copies, exact reproduction of pieces that we consider unique or that would be too complicated to reproduce in any other way or that have become unavailable online or extremely expensive. When I think of a new project, I always try to enrich it with new details or old details that have particularly fascinated me over the years. With this technique you can reproduce anything, you just need to know how to do it correctly. If you are sensitive, don't look at the next 20 seconds, I'm about to deface White Rock Castle. Why? Very simple, I need copies of this precious statue. It belonged to the set of four statues of the Fortified Manor of Game Workshop and it is the last one I have. Too bad to leave it forever in this beautiful fortress, if I can have more, right? <laughs> the pieces that we have to clone must be absolutely perfect, every detail must be highlighted. This is why I dedicate myself to cleaning and preparing each piece that I'm going to clone. One of the main reasons why it is worth having a new mold is to speed up the production of specific pieces. Here you can see how, very simply, I reproduce some copies of pieces of which I already have the molds. This will allow me to have more pieces identical within the same mold and to speed up cloning, but we will see all this in detail shortly. For now, just enjoy this magic.
The second reason in favor of this technique is the speed of cloning numerous and identical pieces. In this video you will see how I created some lace for the castle stands. I created 5, which I will need to create a second and a third mold, for a total of about 20 pieces. This means that uh, with the right casting resin you can create about 20 laces in about 10-15 minutes. Not bad, huh? The last aspect, in my opinion, is the most important. Cloning pieces created with your own hands to reproducing pieces from your collection through this process has the taste of craftsmanship, contains all the pleasure of creating something with your own hands and returns fully in the passion that unites us. The preparation of the molds is a real art. At first I gave it a little importance, but then I realized that following some fundamental rules significantly increases the quality of the final result. First of all, it is necessary to grout the pieces according to very important characteristic, namely their height or thickness. Having extremely flat pieces together with others much thicker or that will require a greater volume of silicone to be immersed will result in a great waste of material. So try to insert pieces that are similar in thickness into the same mold. Another important aspect, the choice of the base on which to fix the pieces. In recent years I have used old CD cases using the plexiglass on the back side. In my opinion this is the right size for a mold that is easy to make and easy to store once finished using. Another important aspect is the spacing of the pieces inside the mold. The distance should never be less than half a centimeter to avoid creating parts that are too fragile with silicon. The arrangement of the pieces must also be such as to allow the maximum possible filling so as not to create empty areas and consequent waste of silicon. Attach the plastic or resin pieces with super glue, a few drops are enough. The pieces in XPS foam are fixed with the hot glue. Remember that for single valve molds like in this case, the pieces must adhere entirely to your base. Avoid holes and level your pieces if necessary for optimal yield. Another important detail is the shape of the frame, which, as you can see, here I am creating with pieces of XPS foam expertly cut with my Proxen. Lego are fine too, of course. A regular shape helps to seal everything well and to more easily avoid silicon liquid leaks, as well as favoring, once ready, the storage of the molds. Always check that your frame is higher than the pieces included inside the mold. The steps you will see now must be done with gloves. I am a professional laboratory technician and unfortunately while I was shooting this video I relied on my decades of experience in handling chemicals and biological substances. This is stupid guys. Don't be like me. Always protect yourself when handling irritating or toxic substances such as resin and so also remember to wear a mask and ventilate the room. Safety first, always. The choice of silicone must be made considering several aspects. Mold rigidity, I prefer rather rigid molds for resin pieces and drying times. I prefer slow silicones, which allow me to intervene with uh, corrective action in the first hour of drying. Calculate the volume of liquid you need to use, not its weight. A good trick is to fill the molds with rice or couscous and calculate what volume of silicone you will need to use. The silicone must be poured only after you are sure that you have mixed the activator well with the silicon rubber. The drying process lasts several hours, so take your time and try to mix as well as possible. The silicone must be poured very slowly with a liquid thread from a height of 20-30 cm. This reduces the possibility of the inclusion of air bubbles that could ruin the mold. It is usually possible to add silicone within the first 10-15 uh, minutes after the first pour.
for the detachment of the molds once hardened remember trust the silicone if you have done all the upstream steps well there is no reason to fear and you can extract your pieces with a certain safety margin without fear of damaging the mold pay particular attention to the pieces that by their nature were not entirely resting on the base here you can see that i have to extract my statue with a movement that helps me remove the piece from inside the mold sometimes it is possible to make a clean cut on the upper part of the silicone to facilitate the extraction of the clone without compromising the seal of the mold however this is a technique that requires precision and experience and we will not consider it here Also in this case, although you have seen me dozens of times, weight my raising to obtain the 1 to 1 ratio, a method that considers the volume ratio better and not that of the weight, is to simply make notches on your plastic cup. Here too, always take your time to mix the two components well, doing it firmly but avoiding creating bubbles or foam during mixing. As for silicone, the choice of the resin must also be made according to your needs. I came to choose this one from Reschimica after a series of attempts and uh, the quality price ratio. When pouring, help the air escape from the more complicated molds by gently squeezing the silicone mold. If you do a good job, you will see that air bubbles coming out of the molds to make room for the resin. Using a straight stick, level your resin without worrying too much about getting a little dirty. Once completely dry, it is very easy to remove the resin that uh, has come out of the molds. At this point, wait a few seconds and uh, you are ready to collect your harvest. You are now ready to create your own arsenal of molds. Okay guys, this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel, share this channel with your friends and till next time, happy crafting!